Hello and welcome to today's video where I'll be covering the LPL Week 6 Day 5 as well as the LCK Week 6 Day 3. It's the first half of two parts where I cover the four major regions. I do this for every day, but in today's case with it being a super week in the LCS, which I forgot yesterday in my video, um, both parts will have double um, leagues in it. So this part, part obviously, LPL, LCK. Part 2 will be the LEC and LCS. Um, I'm going to do this for all four major regions, like I said, every day. I keep repeating myself. Um, I take notes on the games, saving you the time of watching the games. If you don't want to watch a three-game series between TT and LGD, I don't blame you. Both teams are probably not going to make the playoffs, and they're not relevant to you. But I will cover them. Um, you know, things like that. Um, there weren't any really super long games or series today, which was nice. I didn't have a game that went beyond 35 minutes. Sorry, which is uh, a good thing. I, I mean, looking at all my boards here, there are no games that went 35 minutes. So, even in the LCK board, which is a great sign. Um, so, TT and LGD started off um, a slow early game. As you can see here, it's very colorful. Um, blue, red, brown. It means there weren't any picks or anything in the early game in this uh, game one. LGD would get a kill to be able to take the Hextech Drake right after. TT would respond a few minutes, several minutes later actually, get a kill, take an Infernal, got another kill after, they would take a Mountain Uncontested, uh, 19 minutes, Eric would solo kill Puff in the mid lane, Eric piloting the Aphelios, and um, Puff piloting the Jinx, LGD then would win a fight 2-0 afterwards in mid, Eric with both kills in that fight. At 20 minutes, just a minute later, Jay would solo kill UCAL in the side lane, Jay piloting the Rise and um, UCAL on the Corky. Jay has looked actually really good for LGD since coming into the lineup um, and really helped them get a little bit better, although it's too late. LGD are up 4-2, to two, 2K gold after the solo kill. 23 minutes, LGD take a Mountain. TT would punish them 2-0, um, getting two kills. 24 minutes, LGD would get a kill, um, start the Baron, and... Um, TT would kind of mess, I mean, there's a lot of Baron dancing after that, where LGD would get two kills, Eric with both, um, and then LGD finally had the Baron um, and a 4K gold lead. During the Baron and after it was over, LGD would go to Mountain Soul Point in a fight that was 3-0, Fearness with a double kill on the Orn. He ends up being MVP more so for what he did in Game 3, but in all three games he shows up in some way, which is nice to see out of the LGD top laner. Um, at 31 minutes, LGD take the Baron uncontested, that gives them an 8k gold lead, and with that Baron, they end 3-0 in the jungle. Jin, Jin Zhao with a double kill on the Tom Kench. Game 2, um, set opposite result, 16-7. Um, Game 1 was 13-5. So, um, Thunder Talk would get a 2-0 in the jungle at 4 minutes. New was on a Gangplank, and he looked really good on the Gangplank. Um, that turned into an Infernal. 10 minutes. Uh, Fearness would outplay a dive in the top lane, 2-1, to one, which gave LGD some sort of hope in this game for at least a couple minutes. TT would take an Ocean. Um, 12 minutes, they would win a fight in bot 2-0, which put them up 5-2 to two and 4k gold by 15 minutes. Um, LG would go top at 16 minutes. When LGD did that, Thunder Talk went bot lane to go to Cloud Soul Point. At 18 minutes, there's a skirmish in bot that went 1-1. to one. 23 minutes, Thunder Talk would take the Cloud Soul after a fight that went 1-1. One to one, And then they would um, Baron Dance around um, the Purple Worm for a little while, 23 minutes. LGD got a 2-0, I believe, in top. And um, started the Baron, Thunder Talk, and then pushed them off. Acing them 5-0, new with a triple kill on the Gangplank, which gave them Baron in a 9k gold lead. Um, as the Baron was starting to come to an end, Thunder Talk are up 12-7, and new is 4, 3, and 6. 29 minutes, Thunder Talk win 4-0 in the jungle. New with a double kill to end it. Game 3, um, there's a skirmish in the jungle to start this 1-1. One one. LGD went top lane, trying to help Fearness, which ended up working out. They gave the Renekton some power. Um, Thunder Talk would take an ocean on the other side of the rift. LGD would take a rift herald after getting a kill. 13 minutes, the um, attention of, with Fearness paid off. He would solo kill New. Um, New was on a Gragas. After that solo kill between 13 minutes and 20 minutes, there were no kills. LGD would stack two drakes during that time, though. A Cloud and an Infernal. So at 20 minutes, Thunder Talk would get a kill top, but LGD are still at 4-2 and 5.5k and gold. 
21 minutes, Thunder Talk would start getting a little momentum. They want to fight in mid 3-1. UCAL with a double kill on Corky. But at 25 minutes, LGD would want to fight 3-1 to go to Infernal Soul Point. And then after that, they'd get priority on Baron, where once again, every game, it was uh, there was a Baron. The first Baron was really contested. Um, so LGD got a pick. I mean, they had priority after winning the fight for the Infernal. And then they got priority, came off at 1-0, um, came off it again 2-0, took it, and then won a fight 2-0 again afterwards. Eric with a, uh, Eric, I mean, carried. I, I lost track of how many kills. He had two or three kills in that skirmish. Um, eight and a half K gold lead, though. And that um, LGD really never looked back. So 30 minutes, LGD are 13 to 7. Fearness is 6, 3, and 3. So I've only really mentioned they had a solo kill. But you have to imagine when LGD went top lane in seven minutes, that's a kill. Um, LGD needed a kill for the Rift Herald. Maybe he got that one. Um, you know, there fight, are fights throughout this game where Fearness was able to get a kill here or there. Um, LG would take the Infernal Soul uncontested and during this Baron and um, end off of it 2-0. Final score 17-7. Like I said, Fearness was MVP, but both teams are out of the playoffs. So let's get on to the next one. Anyone's Legend and JDG. Two teams on the outside of the playoffs. Anyone's Legend may be out. Given the record, maybe they're just done. Um, but they did fight JDG hard. Game one was heavy JDG favored. Um, JDG would get a 2v2 kill at three minutes. They went top lane at four minutes. As they went top lane, anyone's legend went bot lane. Um, at seven minutes, JDG would get a pick to take the ocean. Anyone's legend would punish them, getting a kill on the turn. JDG then would take an infernal. And um, at 14 minutes, there's a trade of kills from both sides. 17 minutes, JDG are really trying to get these drakes and stack them. They go to Hextech Soul Point after winning a fight 2-0. Um, at 20 minutes, Anyone's Legend gets a kill. This gives JDG only a 6-4 lead and 3k gold, which is nice at, at 20 minutes. That's, you know, clearly they're ahead, but not by a lot. 23 minutes, JDG take the Hextech Soul, winning a fight 2-1. Um, then they get a kill and bot a few minutes later, which puts them up 9-5 and 6k gold. Now that 3k gold has doubled in 7 minutes. And um, they're, you know, getting away with this game. 30 minutes, JDG win a fight. Clear cut 5-0 for the Elder. Yagao with the triple kill. He ends up being MVP. He did really well on the um, Victor in games one and game three. And um, that triple kill secured the Elder, which then led to a Baron, a 13K power play. And, I mean, 13K is insane. Um, and JDG would end with that Baron Kanavi with a double kill. It was nice that Kanavi didn't have to carry for them this game. Because Kanavi had been doing a lot of the work lately. Um, so they're up 1-0. Uh, game 2, Anyone's Legend would, um, I mean, win 24-10. to 10. Uh, They started by taking Infernal. 8 minutes, there's a 1-1 one -to -one in the jungle. They'd get a pick at 10 minutes. 13 minutes, Anyone Legend would find a kill to get the mountain. Um, 15 minutes, they would win a fight 2-0 in the jungle. And now 15 minutes, are 5-1 to -one in kills. Only 1k gold. Um, 16 minutes. Anyone's Legend would have fight and bot 3-0. 3-6-9 with a double kill on the Jays. 18 minutes, Anyone's Legend would take the Rift Herald. They got a kill, took the Rift Herald, got another kill afterwards. Um, used that Rift Herald and then went to Hextech Soul Point at 19 minutes. Um, JDG winning a fight 1-0 um, on the turn. The teams then traded quite a few picks over the next couple minutes in mid lane. There were three skirmishes in mid where there was only one kill each skirmish, where Anyone's Legend would come out 2-1 to one. Um, at 24 minutes, which they had just been trying to get, you know, mid-priority over the Hextech Drake. Um, and when it spawned, Anyone's Legend would get it, winning a 5-5-2, five, five, Betty with a triple kill to secure it. Um, afterwards, Anyone's Legend would take the Baron, 3k gold lead. They're up 14-8, to eight, and Forge is 2-0-12 oh, on the um, LeBlanc, so... I'm not mentioning Forge at all throughout this because he's only got two kills, but he has 100% kill participation through the first 26 minutes on a LeBlanc. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Um, at 30 minutes after the Baron subsided, Anyone's Legend wins a fight in the jungle 4-1, ZDZ with a double kill, and then a minute later, Anyone's Legend wins a fight 5-0 and ends. Uh, ZDZ had a couple kills in that fight as well on the Camille. Or, no, the J... Um, yeah, the Camille's looking at the wrong game when I was picking what figuring out what champion you're playing 
Um, game three, close game, 16 to 14. Um, you know, anyone's legend can put up a fight in game three. You got to give him credit. So, slow early game again, like game two. JDG took an ocean. 11 minutes was our first kill when anyone's legend went bot lane. That led to a hex tech. 13 minutes, JDG would get a kill in the river and also dive bot lane. Um, 13 minutes, JDG would win 3 0 on top. And this now puts him up 5 to 2 and 4.5k and gold by 15 minutes. So they, excuse me, um, they were able to snowball the gold lead. They took an infernal. Anyone's legend would get a pick. And at 21 minutes, anyone's legend would tie them in a skirmish 1 to 1. JDG would then go to infernal soul point. Um, 22 minutes, another skirmish 1 to 1 in mid. Um, and at 25 minutes, anyone's legend actually want to fight 4 2. Um, which got them the Baron, and uh, it cut the gold lead down to negative to one and a half k for JDG. So it, it it became real close. But at 27 minutes, JDG would take the Infernal Soul. Although anyone's legend won the fight three to one. After they took the Infernal, um, the game was 11 to 10 in anyone's legend's favor. But JDG was up one k gold, and Betty was the carry for anyone's legend two one and seven on the um, Jinx where Yagao was 4-0 and 3 on the victor. So, I mean, I haven't mentioned it by name, but you look at all these skirmishes, um, Yagao has played a part in all of them. I mean, he's gotten a kill prob. I mean, I'm going to say probably, but I mean, it, a fight in mid at 13 minutes, 3-0, Yagao probably had one probably there. Um, they got a kill in the river and dove bot. Maybe he participated in that. Um, I mean, I didn't mention it by, I'm not, I don't have it written down, which person got every single kill. But Yagao is 4-0 and 3 Clearly carrying JDG on the victor once again. 30 minutes, there's a skirmish and bot that goes 1-1. One to one. And then at 32 minutes, JDG end 4-2. to two. Hope with a double kill. Um, they come out 2-1. to one. Uh, They needed this win. They'd been on a downward spiral for a little while. Um, and they're trying to catch FPX, which we'll get into. So, FPX and Rare Adam. Um, FPX swap out Clid for Bejuan. So, Bejuan's back in the lineup. And it actually worked for them. I, I mean, they're... Two totally different um, junglers. So, Bejuan actually um, was really active in both games. So, game one, FPX would get a kill in mid at three minutes. The 2v2 would get a kill at four minutes. Um, at six minutes, Rare Adam would take a cloud, though, winning a fight 3 2. Eyeboy with a double kill in that fight. FPX then dove bot lane at seven minutes. Bejuan with a double kill. And then a minute later, FPX would dive bot lane again, which put them up 6-5 to five in kills. Bejuan and LWX both 3-1-2, and two, so they're focusing really hard on the bot lane. But at 12 minutes, Rare Adam would get a pick to take a mountain. Um, FPX would get a pick, uh, but at 17 minutes, Rare Adam would go to Hextech Soul Point after getting two kills. So all this power that um, Bejuan was getting by ganking, he didn't get priority over the objective, and this put Rare Adam in a good position. So 23 minutes, Rare Adam would win a fight 2-0 to take the Baron, 3.5k gold lead, um, because FPX were like, oh, well, we have to not let them get the Hextech Soul at 23 minutes. So, I mean, Rare Adam did the right thing. I said, fine. I mean, you can take a Drake to stop our stacking, but we're going to take a Baron. Um, at 25 minutes, Cube would solo kill Bejuan, which put Rare Adam up 11-7. to Strive was 3-1-6 and six on the um, Oriana at this time, similar to the Yagao. Um, you know, he didn't mention him by name, but he was participating throughout. I mean, 9 of 11 kill participation. And at 27 minutes, Ray Adam would end 4-0 in mid. I boy with the double kill. He ends up being MVP. Um, I mean, I had to pick an MVP. I, I, it was hard. To, I'm, I'm saying it like that, but Rare Adam really nobody stuck out over these two games to make me say that person's the MVP. Um, so I end up picking I boy. I mean, he showed up in both games at some point. So, game two, Rare Adam would get a 2v2 kill at three minutes. At six minutes, they would take a mountain. FPX would punish them getting a kill. Seven minutes, Rare Adam would dive top and also get a pick bot. Um, ten minutes, Rare Adam would outplay a dive 2-1 to one in bot lane. Eyeboy with a double kill. Um, it was a great outplay, and um, Eyeboy's double kill really affected the game, and FPX couldn't look back after that. Rare Adam took a hex tech. Thirteen minutes, FPX would go mid. But Rare Adam still are at 5 to 3 and 2.5k and gold. Rare Adam then go to Ocean Soul Point before 20 minutes. And at 20 minutes, Rare Adam would win a fight in bot 2 0. This put them up 6.5k gold. So between 17 and 20 minutes, Rare Adam had extended their gold lead more than 
twice. It went from 2.5 to 6.5. 23 minutes. Um, there's a fight over the ocean because FPX are trying to prevent Ocean Soul. And as is happening, Cube is trying to run it down top lane to end. Um, so FPX get the ocean. Rare Adam get a couple kills. iBoy, I think, with a couple of them. Um, but uh, they're able to get some backs off, and it pushed Cube away from the Nexus. But Cube exposed the Nexus at 23 minutes. So um, with all that going on and uh, FPX trying to get all the minions out of their base, Rare Adam would take a mountain, I mean, not a mountain, geez, a uh, Baron, go up 7.5k gold and then end with that Baron 5-2. Final score 14 to 7. iBoy being the MVP. Um, by outplaying that dive in the early, you know, early game, the FPX really couldn't keep it going, keep the power going that they had. They, they did in game one, getting LWX ahead, getting Bejuan ahead. They couldn't do that in game two. Um, I mean, it's a different look for FPX because Clid is the LCK, you know, he's an LCK jungler, so he plays you know, more passively, and, I mean, he plays a Volleyberry, he doesn't play a Viego, where Bejuan is trying to carry the game for FPX, and um, it's different looks, and maybe they need to incorporate both of them more um, to try and get better results than committing one way or the other way, but, so that's that for the LPL today, now on to the LCK. All right, so the LCK today, we had Gen G and Damwon playing today, um, and two teams towards the middle of our ranking. So we were able to separate who's, you know, real and who's not. Um, as you see, there's not as much written here as the LPL because these games were um, pretty clean cut. Um, so Gen G would win 2 0 against Red Force. Game one, Gen G would start by diving bot lane at three minutes. At six minutes, Red Force would respond to 2 0 in River. Um, eight minutes, Gen G would go bot lane again. At 10 minutes, Kano would solo kill Ruler, um, and Genji would go mid. Ruler had a really rough series. He got solo killed, I think, three times, um, even though Genji ended up winning so easily. I mean, 28 to 8. Um, Genji would take an ocean, and at 11 minutes, they're up 3 to 2. Um, and, uh, well, sorry. At 11 minutes now, it's 3 to 3, but Genji are up 1k gold. 15 minutes, Genji would win a fight 4 1 in the jungle. Doran with a triple kill on Jace, which pushed their goldie to 5k. Because they were able to take a couple um, turrets off of it. So Doran ends up being MVP. He played a big part in game one in that moment. That really, I mean the game was 3-3, 1k gold at the time. So this fight, I mean, decided game one. Um, Genji would then take a cloud. They'd go to Hextech Soul Point. By 22 minutes, they're up 7k gold. Um, there hadn't been another fight between 15 minutes and 25 minutes. Where Genji would end off of a Baron fight that they won 3-0. Game two, very similar, slow. I mean, not slow, but a quick game. Um, Genji would go top at three minutes, uh, take a hex tech, go mid at 11 minutes. Uh, 13 minutes, 12 minutes, sorry. Ghost would solo kill Ruler in the bot lane. Um, a Thalios Jinx matchup. 13 minutes, Genji would take a mountain after getting a pick. At 15 minutes, Genji would dive top again after they went top a, a, earlier in the game. Um, Red Force would get a 2v2 kill on bot. Once again, Ruler, um, you know, in his 2v2 matchup, he struggled. This put Gen G at a 4 2 2 lead and 2k gold lead. 17 minutes, uh, Dread would solo kill Ruler. So even the jungler is solo killing Ruler. Um, but Gen G are winning. Uh, 19 minutes, they get a pick to go to Cloud Soul Point. At 20 minutes, Gen G win a fight 2 0 to take the Baron. Another 9k gold. And then at 22 minutes, Gen G went 3 0 in mid as they're, you know, pushing down inhib inhibitor turrets. Doran with a double kill in that fight. And then they would reset or try to reset. And then there's a skirmish in mid again a minute later where Gen G would win 4 0. Doran with a triple kill on the Renekton. So Doran ends up being MVP, um, showed up in both games. Series 2, um, games were a little longer. Um, nothing crazy, but longer. So, uh, Damwon would get a kill in top lane at three minutes against Kwangdong. Uh, the Freaks would then get a mountain in response across the rift. DK would dive bot at nine minutes. At 12 minutes, DK would get a pick to take the cloud. And if you don't get, you know, DK kind of just dominate this game. So, at 15 minutes, DK are up um, 3-0 and 3k gold. Kwangdong would go top at 17 minutes. At 18 minutes, DK would go take an infernal um, after getting a kill. 
excuse me, 23 minutes, KDF would stop the stacking, getting a Drake of another Drake of their own. So now it's two to two um, in Drake's, but the game is 26. At 26 minutes, it's four to two for DK, three and a half K gold lead. DK go to Infernal Soul Point and contested. And the fight that decided the game came at 32 minutes, where Damwon went 5 0. Birdall with a double kill in that fight on the Akali. Um, 9.5k gold lead, and they ended off of that Baron 4 0 in bot. Final score 13 3. Game 2, it started by DK getting a 2v2 kill. The Freaks would then respond, going bot to get a kill afterwards. Um, that led to a mountain. At 11 minutes, Kwang Dong would go down there again. And at 12 minutes, DK would win a skirmish 2 1 in bot. So through 12 minutes, we had four instances where something happened bot lane. Highly contested area. At 14 minutes, the Freaks would take an Infernal. DK would punish them 3-0, however. Showmaker with a double kill in the fight. Um, Showmaker ends up being MVP. So, I mean, I'll get to why. Because similar to um, the Rare Adam series that I just went over, really had trouble picking an MVP. Um, but I can reconcile it in my head why Showmaker ends up being MVP. Um, 18 minutes, Damwon after this fight for the Infernal are up 8-4, to 1.5k gold. Um, they get a pick of 20 minutes to take a cloud. Then um, KDF kind of back off and allow DK to take a cloud uncontested, take a Baron uncontested, take another cloud uncontested to Soul Point. So now um, there were no kills between 20 minutes and um, 34 minutes. So after all these drakes were taken, DK are up, you know, up in kills and 4K gold. And then at 34 minutes, um, Damwon would win the game. Five, I mean, so KDF got a pick. We're up 1-0, but DK were able to win a 5v4, 5-0. Birdall carrying them through that on the Gwen. Um, final score, 12-6. So, Showmaker ends up being MVP because of both games, I mean, he played champions at Rome, TF and Rise, and um, he played a role in the dives and the um, picks and, you know, to, you know, the side lane pressure. The side lane pressure was huge in this series. And, I mean, in the matchup between him and Fate, they both were doing it. And he, um, I mean, he, he, he uh, was better at it. Simple as that. Um, so, Dan wanted out 7-5. and five. Um, You know, who would have thought Dan would be like this? But I think it's one of those situations where, We'll know what they are come playoff time. Um, I still think top lane's an issue, but Birdall showed up in both games in some way, so maybe he should have been MVP. Thank you for watching this video where I covered the LPL and LCK for February 25th. Stay tuned later today for my LET and LCS video. Um, I do this every day, like I said, for all four major regions. Um, I do power rankings as well. All four major regions are up on my channel. And um, earlier today, I uploaded a video about patch 12.4, where I went over um, the teams most affected by the patch, um, you know, which players, um, the, the, based on the champions that were buffed and nerfed, which players use those champions the most, and um, which teams had the most players that were affected by those nerfs and buffs. So, like I said, thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for more content.